GOP threatens spy agency's premier surveillance tool. A campaign by right-wing Republicans in Congress to discredit the FBI over allegations of political bias is jeopardizing a program that allows warrantless surveillance on foreign targets. The program, known as Section 702, is set to expire in December and has traditionally received strong support from Republicans. However, opposition within the party has grown as they align with former President Donald Trump's attacks on the FBI. The program has faced resistance from Democrats concerned about civil liberties, and both parties are now calling for stricter limits on surveillance to protect Americans' privacy. The Biden administration has urged lawmakers to renew the program, citing its importance in countering national security threats. However, far-right lawmakers have seized on recent revelations of FBI misuse and botched wiretaps to fuel their opposition. Democrats are demanding significant limitations and safeguards on the program before considering its extension. The administration has signaled openness to discussing changes but has faced skepticism from lawmakers. What Sweden's submarines bring to NATO Sweden's world-leading submarine fleet is seen as a crucial asset for NATO as Sweden prepares to join the alliance. The fleet, consisting of advanced conventional submarines, is well suited for the shallow waters of the Baltic Sea, where Russia's nuclear-powered submarines cannot operate. Sweden's submarines have the ability to stay submerged for longer periods due to their unique diesel engines that can run on liquid oxygen. The country's extensive experience and regional expertise in operating submarines in the Baltic make them a valuable addition to NATO's submarine capabilities. Looking ahead, Sweden is investing in new submarines with advanced features like a multi-mission portal for remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, enabling them to engage in seabed warfare and protect critical infrastructure. This capability is becoming increasingly important as underwater warfare moves towards autonomous operations. Taiwan presidential hopeful vows to maintain peace with China. Ho Yuih, the opposition Kuomintang's candidate for Taiwan's next leader, has pledged to maintain peace with China and reduce mandatory military service, which was extended by President Tsai Ing-wen. Ho stated that stability and peace across the Taiwan Strait are a priority before cutting military service to four months. The ruling Democratic Progressive Party extended military service to one year to demonstrate its commitment to self-defense amid tensions with China. Ho also expressed acceptance of the 1992 consensus, acknowledging one China, but rejected the one country, two systems model proposed by Beijing. He further pledged to delay the phase-out of nuclear plants and restart a fourth plant to ensure a stable electricity supply. The upcoming election in January 2024 remains closely contested, with Vice President Lai ching Te of the ruling DPP and candidate Ko wen Jie of the Taiwan People's Party also vying for the position. Thai opposition party struggles to take power after stunning election victory. Thailand's new parliament has convened, but the leader of the progressive opposition party, Peter Lim Jeroenra, faces challenges in becoming prime minister. To form a government, a party needs support from both the elected House of Representatives and the military-appointed Senate, which represents the conservative ruling class. Peter's Move Forward Party won an unexpected election victory, alarming the establishment due to its progressive agenda that includes reforms of powerful institutions like the monarchy and the military. Additionally, tensions have arisen between Move Forward and its coalition partner. The Few Thai Party the parties have reached a compromise on the position of House Speaker to strengthen unity, but their apparent distrust could hinder PETA's prime ministership. Legal challenges and potential disqualification also pose threats to PETA and his party. Previous Thaksin-backed governments have faced similar obstacles, raising concerns about political instability in Thailand. Bill Clinton tells Kosovo, stop, foolishness, in Serb Majority North. Former U.S. President Bill Clinton has urged Kosovo's government to halt its actions in the Serb-majority north, where tensions have escalated in recent months. The region has witnessed increased violence since ethnic Albanian mayors took office after a low-turnout local election boycotted by Serbs. Clinton, who played a key role in ending the Kosovo War, called for an end to the unrest and criticized the installation of mayors despite objections from local Serbs. The United States and the European Union, Kosovo's main allies, have held Prime Minister Albin Kurdi responsible for exacerbating tensions. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte expressed concern over the growing tensions between Belgrade and Pristina and emphasized the need for de-escalation and normalization of relations. The EU has already imposed sanctions on Kosovo and threatened further measures if Kurdi does not back down. 
China's top diplomat Wang Yi accuses U.S. of stoking tensions with Japan and South Korea. China's top diplomat, Wang Yi, indirectly criticized the United States for fueling anti-Beijing sentiment in Japan and South Korea. Speaking at a trilateral forum, Wang called for cooperation among China, Japan, and South Korea, urging them not to blindly follow the U.S.'s lead. He suggested that a major power outside the region had deliberately exaggerated ideological differences and sought to replace cooperation with confrontation. Wang emphasized the need for peaceful development and understanding each other's chosen paths Japan and South Korea have been strengthening their ties with the U.S., seen as part of Washington's efforts to counter China's influence in East Asia. Wang warned against using relationships with other countries to contain neighboring nations and urged independence, self-reliance, and unity in the region. The criticism comes after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit to Beijing, which aimed at mending relations but was followed by escalating tensions. Commander of Russia's Akhmet unit killed in Donbass, Russian media. Yevgeny Pisarenko, commander of the Akhmet battalion, a Chechen armed group fighting on the Russian side, has been killed in combat in the Donbass region of Ukraine. The news was confirmed by Alodinov, a Chechen official, who expressed gratitude to Pisarenko's parents for raising a hero. Pisarenko, also known as Veliki I, the Great, was a former Stavropol riot police officer who volunteered to protect the residents of Donbass. The exact date of his death was not specified. The Akhmet Battalion has been involved in combat in Ukraine since the war began. In June, the Russian Ministry of Defense required all voluntary formations to sign a contract with the ministry, and the Akhmet unit was the first to do so on camera. U.S. set to restrict China's access to cloud computing, Wall Street Journal. The Biden administration is reportedly planning to limit Chinese companies' access to U.S. cloud computing services. The proposed rule would require U.S. cloud service providers like Amazon and Microsoft to obtain permission from the U.S. government before offering cloud computing services that utilize advanced artificial intelligence chips to Chinese customers. The restriction is expected to be implemented by the U.S. Department of Commerce in the coming weeks as an expansion of its semiconductor export control policy. China has also recently announced its own controls on the export of metals used in the semiconductor industry. Europe's top diplomat to visit Beijing as economic rivalry grows. The European Union's top diplomat, Josep Borrell, is scheduled to visit Beijing next week for meetings with Chinese officials. The trip comes as Europe grapples with managing economic competition with China. Borrell will engage in discussions with Foreign Minister Qin Gang and other senior figures, addressing strategic issues such as human rights practices and the situation in Ukraine. Economic and trade dialogues are expected to continue in September, with the possibility of a leaders' summit at the end of the year. The visit aims to balance engagement, competition, and systemic rivalry between the EU and China. This visit follows EU climate chief Franz Timmermans' ongoing meetings with Chinese officials on climate and environmental issues. Japan to monitor China's metals curbs for trade rules violations. Japan has issued a warning stating that it will oppose any violations of World Trade Organization WTO, rules and other international agreements as China tightens export controls on germanium and gallium, metals crucial for chip production in the telecom and electric vehicle sectors. Japanese Trade Minister Yasutoshi Nishimura expressed concern about the planned export restrictions and emphasized that Tokyo will closely monitor how China implements them. Japan will take appropriate action if any measures are deemed unfair under international rules. Nishimura clarified that China's restrictions are not seen as a response to Japan's recent tightening of licensing requirements for chipmaking equipment. China, as the dominant global producer of gallium and germanium, aims to introduce export licensing for these metals and their compounds starting in August. The metals are vital for compound semiconductors used in various industries, including electric vehicles, defense, and displays.